Hi, it's Richard Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Now, I talk about criminal cases here online, criminal investigations, criminal verdicts from time to time. And as longtime viewers know, I'm against the death penalty. Well, yesterday is a typical example of why I'm against the death penalty. I'm watching a show on television called The Last Defense concerning the case of Julius Jones who right now sits on Oklahoma's death row. Right now, let me just say, the crime that he was convicted for is an awful crime. It's terrible. It involves the murder of an innocent individual in front of his family as part of a carjacking, right? Terrible crime, terrible crime. So, I was aware of the fact from an earlier episode of the documentary series that Julius Jones was claiming that he was with numerous, let me repeat that, numerous members of his family. At the time, the prosecution contends the crime was committed. Right? So, here I am. I'm in the second episode. The second part of the documentary of this series. I'm sitting there and I'm wondering how this alibi witness portion of the trial was presented to the jury right I'm just wondering what exactly the people who were with Julius Jones at a birthday celebration so they would have a specific memory of the date right how all of these folks who knew him well presented themselves to the jury Right? I was sitting there thinking to myself, wow, why didn't the jury believe these folks? And then, of course, the show drops a bombshell. Absolute bombshell. None of these witnesses were given the opportunity to testify. I'm shaking my head just repeating it. None of these witnesses were given an opportunity to testify. Why? Because Julius Jones's lawyer was inexperienced. I'm not kidding, he's on the show. He was inexperienced at the time. And he seemed to believe that his client had written a letter to a girlfriend in which the client claimed he was someplace else, not at home with his family at the time of the murders. Folks, this is mind-blowing malpractice. Right, by the way, the girlfriend to whom Julius Jones wrote the note has signed an affidavit stating that at no time did Julius Jones write her anything that suggested that he was someplace else at the time of the birthday celebration at his house. Right? For those of you who support the death penalty, and I understand many are going to say, hey, it's a state's rights issue, right? For those of you who support the death penalty, in the comment section to this video, please tell us whether you think the lawyer made a mistake in not presenting any of the witnesses, any of them, who were with the defendant at the time the crime was committed across town. Right? I mean, folks, this is ludicrous. Let me go one step further. There are other players in these death penalty cases. We now have DNA evidence, right? 
DNA technology, rather, that can analyze items of evidence to see whether a defendant is telling the truth about whether that defendant was even in contact with that evidence. Now understand, the prosecution's chief witness, a guy whose nickname is Westside, admitted to the cops during one of the interviews that he actually spent the night after the murder at the home of the defendant. Well, guess what? Believe it or not, to everyone's surprise, apparently, the police then found a gun and a bandana that were involved in the shooting at the defendant's house. Right? Now, the defendant contends that it's not his. Right? That this stuff had to be planted by, guess who? The prosecution's chief witness, who admits, admits to being at the scene of the murder. So, of course, Julius Jones's lawyers are trying to have the bandana tested for DNA. Now, what DA would ever deny this request? If you're interested in justice, wouldn't you want the bandana tested to see if it even has the defendant's DNA on it? After all, Whoever did this crime was wearing the bandana, right? So wouldn't you want to find out if the guy who's on death row has any DNA on the bandana? Folks, this is a no-brainer, especially in a death penalty case where the penalty is so severe and irreversible. Incredibly, the DA is hesitant to have the bandana tested. Think about that. Right? A law enforcement official, someone we have delegated the responsibility of pursuing justice to, doesn't want to test an item that was worn during the commission of a murder for the defendant's DNA. Absurd. Absurd. So, for those of you pro-death penalty advocates, right again in the comment section to this video, tell us why you support either the defendant's trial lawyer or the DNA, excuse me, or the DA who doesn't want to test for DNA <laughs> in a death penalty case. Understand too that this case is so ridiculous that the one adult witness who saw the perpetrator didn't see the perpetrator's face couldn't pick him out of a lineup. Understand too, that person is certain of the fact that the perpetrator had a half of inch of hair sticking out from under a stocking cap. Here, that the night of the murder, quite frankly, Julius Jones did not have. Now understand, the police have a photo of Julius Jones. It shows the length of his hair. Right? It shows the length of his hair. Would it surprise you to learn that his lawyer did not present that photo to the jury? So the jury didn't hear from any of the people who were with the defendant at the time the crime was committed across town 
and they also never got a photo of the defendant that shows the length of his hair so that the jury could decide whether the testimony of the lone witness matched the physical description of the defendant at the time of the crime. And in this case, believe it or not, with this shabby legal representation, the defendant was convicted and now sits on death row. Understand, the DA now doesn't want to test the bandana that the actual perpetrator wore for the defendant's DNA. Total farce, right? All Americans, quite frankly, should be embarrassed by cases like this. I know I am. I cannot believe that anyone is sitting on death row with shabby evidence and poor legal representation like this. Right? Let me just say it's time for the adults to take over. The governor of the state of Oklahoma needs to look at this case immediately. People outside the state, people like me, in places like California, need to start approaching President of the United States Donald Trump to have him take a look at this. Right? This isn't the kind of due process Americans should be getting anywhere in the country. Right? All of us deserve much better than this. That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Let me hear from you in the comment section to this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.